Welcome back to my channel. I am your favorite mother of three bougie vintage ends. Let's get right into this baddies review, okay? Because I'm, girl, I, I'm so behind. Like, oh my gosh. Obviously, you know this is pretty for a penny, so if you want to know what products I'm using, you could just check the description box. I'm going to start with my e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. So, of course, in the last episode, we saw that Persuasion and Anne were fighting. And so the fight is continuing. Ooh, this feels like... This feels interesting. This is thick, girl. I get why they call it a power grip now. It's giving lubricant. <laughs> the security is between Anne and uh, Persuasion. And Anne's like, get her off of me, get her off of me, get her off of me. Ma'am, you are the, the one that attacked her out of nowhere. You jumped off the damn couch like a spider monkey. What do you mean get her off of you? <laughs> Persuasion is like, I did not want to do this, Anne. Like, you brought this on yourself. And obviously security finally gets them apart. Persuasion's wig is completely off again, but this time she had a bald cap. And as much as her hair was torn off her head, obviously because it's not, it can't be sewn down because she's bald underneath, Anne's hair was in pretty good condition after this fight. So whoever did Anne's install was the bomb.com. <laughs> because her hair did not move, okay? Anne tells Persuasion to be prepared because she is going to fight her again when they get on the bus. And Persuasion is like, what the hell is going on? Persuasion is so mad because her wig, her $900 wig, was snatched off of her head after only being on it for one hour. <laughs> She's like, I just got it installed again. Like, I tried to salvage it and it got snatched off my head after getting it put back on an hour later. Like, that's some bull. I would be very upset. I would actually leave at this point because you guys are not about to keep playing in my face. They have the girl separated and all of a sudden, and sneaks persuasion. This was the first sneak of the season. Okay, this is the one time I'm gonna have to admit that and I mean, that persuasion was snuck. She was not prepared. Security was taking them into separate corners and Anne escaped <laughs> and then started to try to fight Persuasion again which I don't know why because she attacked Persuasion the first time and she definitely did not win that fight. Persuasion is extremely upset. She's pissed off and I think she has every right to be because like I said in the last video she was minding her business smoking her hookah pen like she didn't want no smoke with anybody. She was calm, cool, and collected. Well, when Anne started to approach her about this foolishness she was definitely taking in the back and was like, what is this? Krishan comes out of nowhere and Krishan's like, I, uh, I'll beat her up again, I'll whoop her ass again, like, and we're like, what the hell, where'd she come from? <laughs> there was no reason for that. So Persuasion is like, y'all not finna jump me. What is this? Wh where did she come from? Where did Krishan come from? They already had the first fight, the sink fight, then they had the fair one. She's like, you guys are not gonna jump me. It's not gonna be Anne and Krishan against Persuasion. So Krishan was like, I'll beat the F out of you again. And Persuasion is like, for what? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, for what? What is, what is really going on? But I guess a lot was said during that first fight. So, hey, if Krishan decides that she's gonna be mad every single day and beat up Persuasion every single day, I guess they're gonna have to send somebody home like Bad Girls Club. So Roly was in confessional and she had me cackling. She is actually so funny. She was saying that Persuasion's wig is off again and she's like, like, are you trying to be a Power Ranger? <laughs> Because why are you bald again? Why is your wig off again? Why are you fighting so damn much? But the fact of the matter was, she wasn't really trying to fight and it wasn't really her fault that her wig got snatched off her head. So <laughs> I don't think she wants to be a Power Ranger, but I think Roly is absolutely hilarious. As the episode continues, we see that Krishan desperately wants to fight Persuasion again. And I just can't make any sense of it. It's like, you already proved who you are, what you do, what you stand for, what you're gonna take, what you're not gonna take. There's no reason under the sun for her to want to beat up Persuasion again. So Persuasion's like, I'm not doing this. This is crazy. And it kind of sounded like she was ready to go home. Anne is in her room and she's cussing, being extra, doing what Anne does. And Krishan starts talking about how Persuasion needs to run her her fate. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> did that 
not already happen? Like, what is there to prove now? There's nothing to prove. She, I think she's just fighting her off the strength that she brought up her boyfriend. That she brought up Blueface and said what she said about him. And so now she wants to beat her up every single time she sees her. She wants to give her a candy ass whipping, okay? And I can't say that I agree with this. <laughs> But who am I? This is an elf beauty blender. It's actually quite massive compared to my other beauty blenders But I love the density and I actually kind of like that. It's bigger especially for applying foundation So the other girls in the house are saying that it's kind of whack That Krishan is trying to fight persuasion again because the fact of the matter was the fight between Persuasion and Anne had nothing absolutely nothing to do with Krishan. So I'm using my Anne Cool eyeliner pencil in the shade Lapis? Lapis? So as Anne is upstairs, I guess trying to cool down, she is saying that it is her belief that she is going to scrap with everybody in the house by the end of the season. And I'm like, how? Negativeenergy.com, like why, why would you even want to? Why would that be your, you know, your MO? Why would you call that upon yourself? And really, what is that doing for you? So production is trying to calm Krishan down at this point and the lady that, I don't know if it was Tamika because that's one of the executive producers of the show, but um, she was saying to Krishan, remember the prayer that we said this morning? So Krishan, I feel like can be guided, but it's just gonna take some time and some effort, okay? So at this point, it appears as though Anne and Krishan are teaming up, pretty much enabling each other. And later in the episode, Anne actually says that she feels like Krishan is like the little devil on her shoulder. No, Anne, that's you, baby. <laughs> You are your own devil, okay? So she does say that she feels like Krishan is a little devil on her shoulder. If you have a devil and an angel on each side. But now they're in the kitchen and Krishan asks Anne what she said to Persuasion like during the fight or to like start the fight. And Anne starts talking about how she doesn't even remember. And Krishan is looking at Anne like Anne is crazy. And that she is. What I find hilarious is that Krishan is looking at anybody like they are crazy. If Krishan is looking at you like you're a crazy person, something is definitely wrong because Krishan is certified nuts, okay? <laughs> the fact that she's looking at Anne like something is that Anne screws are loose says a whole lot. So Anne begins to tell Krishan how she thinks that she's crazy because the first day that they met, apparently Krishan ate her cheeseburger and Krishan starts laughing like that's funny. And so Anne is like, you know, other people might fight you for that, but she messes with her and she thinks that she's cool people. Anne tells Krishan that she likes her because she's not scary like the other girls in the house. And so Anne has it in her head that all the other girls in the house are scary. I don't really know why she feels this way, but <laughs> Anne lives in a world of her own, okay? What I'm sensing is that Anne simply does not want to be on Krishan's bad side because we've already seen her fight and she's not trying to get beat up. So it just looks like she's trying to make an ally so that she's never on the receiving end of Krishan's fist. Anne and then admits that she has not even fought since the 10th grade. And I'm like, that explains a whole damn lot. Her behavior is just strange. And if you can't tell, I'm just doing any old thing to my eyes right now, like please. So at this point, Krishan is really looking at Anne like she is not all there. And she's just laughing. Outside on like the porch or the balcony, whatever you wanna call it, persuasion, is pretty much saying how she's done. You know, she's really upset, she's annoyed. Her $900 wig is ruined. But she states that she's not gonna do this for another three weeks with these girls. Like, she's not fighting every single day. If they're not gonna get rid of Krishan, then they need to get rid of Anne. But she said they both can't stay. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't think you have that much authority. <laughs> So you, whoever stays is whoever stays, but I think they'll both be staying for a while. If anything, she'll probably end up leaving before they end up leaving. This is definitely not what they signed up for, so I can definitely see why she's frustrated. They're not giving us a close-up, but you can see that there is indeed a scratch on Persuasion's face. So I guess Anne, with her initial attack, got to scratch her face. Outside! 
side, Miss Anne is talking all kinds of mess <laughs> to Roly and Krishan. She's talking like she is top dog, like she will fight anybody, she'll beat up anybody. She's doing a lot. She then says that the girls in the house need to not be writing checks that their asses can't cash and that they're broke, so they definitely shouldn't be trying to write any checks. They definitely can't afford to talk S-H-I-T. That's Anne's attitude. That is exactly what she was saying, and I really don't know where Anne was getting her information source from, but like I said, she lives in her own world. She's not afraid to say what's on her mind when it's on her mind, even if she is dead wrong. So Anne starts talking about how Krishan is her bitch, and she loves Krishan, and I'm like, baby, Krishan probably don't even like you. Like, <laughs> she is all, like, literally, she's all up on Krishan this episode. It's embarrassing. So as they're conversing, Roly tries to get to the bottom of the situation with persuasion, and she's trying to figure out what exactly, you know, triggered the fight, why it happened, what is the real reason that she got attacked. In the end, her conclusion was simply that Anne was clout chasing. She just wanted to be known as somebody. She wants to be a celebrity. She wants to be talked about, which obviously, right now we are talking about Anne. So I guess she's getting her wish. <laughs> And I just need to give like a round of applause for Slim's tummy. Slim's belly is like iconic, okay? Her tummy is so nice. That is the tummy I would bring to the doctor and say, I want my stomach to look like this. And they'd be like, yeah, that's not achievable. <laughs> So Anne gets to talking about fighting on the bus. Roly starts to be like, listen, don't even bother with that foolishness. She lightly suggests, hey, just wait until we get into the next city at least because they don't want any hiccups or holdups. So don't be fighting on the bus. Roly's like, just wait. But Anne, who is unreasonable, oh my gosh. She starts arguing, talking about, don't be trying to put no rules and restrictions on me. And it's like, okay, do you have sense? ma'am do you have sense or are you just gonna be problematic all damn season long and I think we know the answer to that so Roly says to Anne listen I'm just telling y'all for your own protection because if y'all get to fighting on that bus and I so much as get my toe stepped on I'm gonna swing and I'm not asking questions I'm just gonna start swinging so at that point Rock is annoyed and I'm like the listening comprehension and communication skills are so lacking in this group of women, it's very sad because they're all of the age where they should be able to communicate effectively and they're not. So then Anne and Roly start flirting and Anne was like, I can't fight you. I wanna eat your coochie so bad. And I was like, oh, where did that come from, ma'am? <laughs> I said she tried to be on P Valley last episode. Okay, that's where she was trying to be at. There was a lot going on in that episode. And I was actually stunned. I didn't know that Roly Poly was bi. So she said she wants to lick Anne's coochie. And I was like, oh. <laughs> So they get to giggling and hugging and it's a key. In the next scene, they're getting on the bus. Once again, Natalie calls out Krishan for having her AirPods on and I'm like, you were pretty much done talking. Like what she's saying was not of importance. All it was was that they were going to Charlotte, which Krishan already knew. So it was like, why is she calling out for wearing, calling her out for wearing her AirPods? And I get it, like they're on TV. So technically Krishan should not have her AirPods in. She should wait until they get on the bus before she puts on her AirPods. But to me, it's just not a big deal. In Confessional Rock is very annoyed with Natalie and she just rolls her eyes. <laughs> And just as a side note, Krishan looks stunning in her orange hair. Anyway, as they're getting on the bus, Bree says that she has a little, oh, what in the world? She says she has a little something she has to handle before they get on the bus and head to the next city. Obviously, we knew what that was. <laughs> she wanted to fight Anne before taking off. She wanted to get that out the way. And so the girls are getting on the bus. They are in pretty much a single file and all of of a sudden, Bree steps out of line and starts saying, what's up to Anne? Anne runs over, rushes over, and she was with the foolishness immediately, okay? She was getting, so she runs up on Bree and they start to tussle in the grass because they both ended up falling over and then security got involved. So their fight was not even a fight. It was like tackle football. I don't even know. <laughs> 
don't even know. So once security gets involved, Anne starts yelling that Brie is an escort and saying that she has a raggedy ass pussy. <laughs> She was just trying her dandest to insult her. So Brie, who is visibly upset also, calls Anne a uh, OnlyFans ass bitch. They're pretty much just insulting each other for their career paths, which made no sense because y'all is both in the damn same damn career. Y'all is both doing the same damn thing on two different platforms. Why are we insulting each other? I don't know. Brie calls her out, says you sell your pussy too, so what's up? She's basically telling her you're an idiot and she's right. There's no question about this. Anne starts telling Brie that she's dumb for attacking her before they got on the bus, which I find ironic because she's the same one that told the other girls they can't put rules and regulations on her because she wanted to fight on the bus when they were telling her, wait till we get to Charlotte. So Natalie is like, we are never gonna get to Charlotte. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, you guys are staying right the frig put, but you probably had to check out the, of the Airbnb so they couldn't even stay a day longer if they wanted to. In confessional, Jayla says that she was actually surprised that Brie went and handled her business, but she's proud of her for doing so. And I wasn't really sure why Jayla was surprised by Brie because Brie fought on her season of Bad Girls Club, but probably because of the way Brie was acting on the bus or on the sprinter van the first day when Anne started to call her out. She wasn't acting like she could fight. <laughs> She wasn't acting like the Brie that we saw on her season. Once they kind of settle, Krishan gives Brie her props for standing up for herself and fighting Anne. And I thought that was hilarious because Anne has been dick sucking <laughs> Krishan. And Krishan's over here basically telling her good job. <laughs> Good job for beating up my friend or trying to beat up my friend, whatever. Krishan has no friends in the house. She is a, a lone wolf, okay? So don't be fooled thinking that she's your friend, Anne, because Krishan, her only friend is Blueface, okay? She not worried about nobody else. So Anne is, has got Krishan messed up and I, I hope that Anne and Krishan end up fighting by the end of the season. Being said, Krishan feels as though the fight was pointless, which a lot of us feel the fight was definitely pointless because it was stopped as soon as it started <laughs> and she's not wrong now Anne is in the house cussing because she says Brie snatched her expensive ass wig and now her pants are dirty like her knees look like my kids knees after they go <laughs> Backyard. I can't. So in the house, Anne is cussing about how the girls are mad that they're escorts. And I'm like, I'm sorry, is Pot is Pot calling Kettle Black here? Why in the world is Anne even saying these things? Like, did I miss something? Is she on OnlyFans reading Bible scriptures like me? <laughs> This inside joke. And then goes on to say that she is gonna hop her pretty brown ass back onto the bus where she belongs because these hoes don't scare her. And seems like she's trying to prove something to herself, to that, like I don't know who she's trying to prove something to, but it's probably herself. She's trying to prove that she is somebody because she doesn't know who she is. And that was evident from the very first episode when she, we were introduced to her. Hopefully she finds herself sometime during the season, but this is not exactly the place that you go and find yourself. <laughs> So I don't know what's gonna happen with Anne, but uh, keep her in your prayers. So now that Brie and Anne had their 1v1, <laughs> she is saying that she's over everything and she hopes that Anne's mind is in the same place. Now that they've had their little squabble, she hopes that Anne can move on the same way that she feels like she's about to move on. Like it's pointless, it's tired, it's unnecessary, and it's, it's really dragging out at this point. So Persuasion is pretty much um, being hyper vigilant right now because she doesn't want to fight again. And now the girls are on the bus and they are turning up and they're heading to Charlotte. So in confessional, Rolly has on a different wig and I said, yes, this is the one because the one that she had on before was not giving, okay? Roly Poly is basically giving a deep throating lesson using a banana and everybody has bananas in their hand and they're doing the absolute most. I'm like, why is this a part of the excursion right now why so she shows how she can deep throat a banana then it's Natalie's turn this is very much cringe behavior okay and quite frankly Natalie's was making me uncomfortable if that's what she over there doing in Dubai <laughs> um 
I'm gonna just leave it at that. They get to playing Never Have I Ever, and it's at this time that Persuasion decides to let us in on a little secret. She said that her and her baby daddy did anal for four hours straight, and she loved every every minute of it. I said, what the hell? Uh-uh, child. <laughs> Could it be me, child? Not, no, ew, like, ew, like, <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? And I'm like, at what point do people draw the lines? Well, I guess if you're a stripper, you really have nothing to hide. But you don't you got parents that are gonna see you on TV and be and you have to hear you say these things? They actually tried to call Ann over because Ann was on the uh, at the front of the bus with like the staff and she was ignoring them. She refused to come over to them and play with them. She does not like them, she doesn't want to talk to them right now. She's mad. <laughs> She's big mad and I'm like, well, why are you mad when you're the one that started the damn fight? Like she could have left Brie alone and nobody would be bothering her, but she wanted a problem and then she got it. So Anne does not have a right to be pissed off right now. She really doesn't. She just goes to sleep and everybody else is at the back of the bus having a good old time. I am using my Rimmel London per, uh, Match Perfection Silky Loose Face Powder in translucent or transparent. Cute, it comes with a puff that I'll never use. <laughs> And it looks like the Laura Mercier powder, so hopefully it's good. So while they're on the bus, Krishan and Persuasion are actually kind of having like a heart to heart. So I guess they're kind of like burying the hatchet. Persuasion then starts to cry. She's getting a little bit emotional and Rock is comforting her. Then things take a turn for the absolute worst. <laughs> I'm like, oh God, like, can we get a break? P opens up about beating cancer and she says like she just got her biopsy results back yesterday. And while she's telling this story, this crazy story, might I add, she then says that Krishan gets off of her lap because she's annoyed with what Persuasion's saying. And when she gets off her lap, she starts talking about how the last girl that she slapped had skin cancer <laughs> and she does not care like I don't like well what that it was not the time like you guys just made up like who cares even if that is the case why are you saying that Krishan so Krishan was like it does not matter what ailments you have what diseases you have if I'm gonna rock you I'm gonna rock you you better just watch what you say and that was what Krishan's whole point was because cancer ain't gonna stop me from beating you up I felt as though she was being very cold to the situation but as I kept listening to what persuasion was saying I no longer really felt that way when Krishan was saying these things slim kind of interjects and is like hey like you know show some compassion you don't have to be so cold about it and so rock actually says to um, slim you're right she says you're right but I don't know if it was like a you're right like just to get her to stop talking or if if she actually was being genuine and saying, you know what, Slim is right. I shouldn't be so mean per se. So as I continued listening to what Eladria was describing as beating cancer, it dawned on me that she must be trying to have a storyline of some sort. What she described was not cancer, a cancer diagnosis that has been then been beat, no. And so when Jayla goes into her confessional, she too calls out Eladria for doing too much where this cancer thing was concerned and saying that she does not have cancer, did not have cancer, and she just had an irregular pap smear or something like that. <laughs> When Persuasion was actually talking and saying or sharing her story, Jayla actually had a funny look on her face and she excused herself from the conversation. It was almost like she was, she had to get up because she couldn't bear to listen to you tell lies. If somebody would lie about having cancer, they would lie about anything. And so this kind of makes us have to question her blue face story. But I think some of you guys already said that her blue face and Krishan actually had a threesome and that's why she was saying the things that she was saying to Krishan. 
but um, I don't know because I wasn't in their bedroom. So, but her lying and being extra about cancer lets me know that she is a pathological liar because why would you even call that on yourself? Like, why would you even say something like that? So, Eladria starts talking about her suicide attempts and checking her own self into a mental hospital. I'm wondering if she had postpartum or something because she did recently have a child. So, I guess because they're drinking so much, they decide that they need a water break. So, they have these tiny little water bottles, and I'm like, this is exactly exactly how we know the budget for the show is non-existent. They're not even getting full bottles of water, okay? They're giving them miniature bottles of water. If Eladria is not looking for a storyline, I have to conclude that she's a little bit slow and she doesn't understand what went on with her body. So Natalie basically is like choosing to persuasion and of course Rock is not paying attention so Natalie is trying to get her attention. She calls her a good five times and I'm like what is her obsession with this lady? Leave Krishan alone. Krishan is also in her very own world, okay? <laughs> highlighter is not a highlighter it's actually my Milani eyeshadow in Bella Copper number 23 so once she gets Krishan's attention Krishan actually leads them in prayer and I thought that was real cute finally we make it to North Carolina and so my question today is does Charlotte North Carolina have five niggas like Jayla said like she claimed because if they do I'm coming to Charlotte <laughs> I am coming to Charlotte, okay? Give me your brother, your cousin, your daddy, whoever. <laughs> Jayla said that Charlotte has fine niggas and I would like to know if that's the truth. I've been putting blush on my nose these days and I absolutely love it. The Airbnb that they're at this week is on a lake. So it's definitely giving bourgeois, okay? Natalie tells the girls what floor their rooms are on and everybody is basically to go and find the line paper on the door with their name on it. I don't know why, but Krishan once again looked very annoyed. Look at me saying I would never use the puff, but I am gonna use it. I'm gonna use it so I can line my eye, my eye. Jayla has her own room. So as you can see, things are biased for Jayla because Natalie likes her the most, so she's gonna have her own room no matter where they go. Jayla actually tried to switch. She tried to put her name on Natalie's door and Natalie's name on her door because obviously Natalie's room is bomb again. But she was just joking. And so Jayla ends up joking about how she's always gonna have her own room and all the girls are always gonna be mad about it. But the truth was, she was not joking. So Brie and Persuasion are in the basement and they actually love their room because they have their own bed. They're not in bunk beds. I think the seniority is pretty much based on like if they are OG bad girls from Bad Girls Club versus if they're from a different show or new altogether. The only person that's not been on a show before is Anne. Brie tells Persuasion that she's happy that her and Krishan made up. Persuasion actually tells Brie it was bound to happen which actually kind of surprised me. Brie also states that she hopes that she and Anne can make up or at least have an amicable situation. Both of them are in agreement that they are ready to have some fun because it's been drama after drama after drama. They just want to break. Persuasion decides she's going to take a shower first. So Brie says she's going to take a nap and ask Persuasion to wake her up when she comes out the shower. Now, Persuasion has been wearing hats and um, towels on her head. I guess she's trying to disguise the fact that she has scratches on her face, but it was obvious that that was what she was doing. So in this moment, she complains about the fact that her eye has been bothering her since the fight with the hyena, which would be Anne. I'm gonna go put my lashes on and we're gonna finish the look. Is it just me or like when my period, when your period's coming, does your back like feel like it's on fire? So I'm gonna use the hard candy setting spray, but I'm gonna pour it into my Mist and Fix spray bottle because the nozzle on this sprays out like it has no damn sense and I am not feeling it. So I didn't realize how tall Anne is. She is ginormous. Megan the Stallion tall, like she's really tall. Rolly and Slim got bunk beds and they're not impressed. I'm like, Rolly is a big girl. I don't think she should be on a bunk bed. I don't think that's fair. I think that she should be getting a, a queen size bed. But again, I don't work for Zeus. But if I were Rolly, I would be bullying one of them other girls out of their bed. <laughs> because how do they have her on some little ass bunk bed? 
Where did you do that at? So yeah, her and Slim were not at all impressed with their bunk bed setup. And so Anne and Krishan are sharing a room. This is obviously good news for Anne because Anne is obsessed with Krishan. And so Anne is telling Krishan how she's aggravated about the fight that she got into. And Rock says she feels the same way about Persuasion. She also says that the apology that Persuasion gave her on the bus, and my whole thing is, okay, if you felt that way, then why didn't you say that on the bus? Like, why are you saying that now that you're in your Airbnb room? Because who's really fake then? Walmart was having a three for eighteen dollar three for eighteen dollar sale for all the Rimmel products. So I bought three Rimmel things. I bought the setting powder. I bought a lipstick, which is a stay matte liquid lip color. And I also bought what was the third thing, girl? Oh, and I also bought a concealer. The concealer for contour I like, but it dried a little bit too quickly on me. I just have to learn how to use it or how quickly I need to use it. I like this as well, but this liquid lip color is problematic. Krishan also states that she feels like persuasion is scared and that's the only reason she apologized because she doesn't want to get beat up again. Maybe right? I don't really think so because when she was talking to Brie, persuasion said that she's happy that her and Krishan made up. Keep in mind, she's much older than Krishan, so her logic, even though it came after the fact, it may very well be she's too damn old to be carrying on with this foolishness. Shout out to Lippy Lab one time. Time. Lippy Lab saved my lips, okay? Because for some reason, all of my bliss texts are missing, okay? Missing. Can't find them. I usually have one in my car, one in my purse, one in my bathroom, and I can't find my bliss texts anywhere. So I had a Lippy Lab lip gloss in my purse today, and I was going to the bank, and it saved my life because it feels so damn good. It doesn't feel like lip gloss. It's not like sticky. Krishan starts clowning P for the cancer situation. So she calls it crocodile tears, and she says that persuasion is a hoe. She's like, you're a hoe. So not unlikely for you to have an irregular pap smear and that is not considered cancer. That is not considered beating cancer. So then Rock starts talking about how she's not gonna be sat there crying because she has asthma and eczema. <laughs> And I was like, that is completely different. Just as simple as eczema because she didn't have cancer. So at this point, Anne continues dick sucking rock. Like It was actually cringy how much dick sucking she was doing. So I personally feel like she's trying to be friends with Krishan so that when they leave the situation, she has her as a friend and she can connect her to rappers and stuff because Krishan is connected to Blueface. So if they make it outside of this thing being friends, she has an into the industry because right now she's just an OnlyFans girl that most of us never heard of until this show. That being said, and being extra, was saying that she was talking to Krishan and she's like, let's push bitches out of the house like Bad Girls Club. And I'm like, you guys are not gonna be able to do this. So let's not even joke. <laughs> so funny that she was projecting and saying that Eladria is extra when she herself is very much that. So in the next scene Brie and Sway are headed to the hospital or Brie is walking Sway outside to go to the hospital because she has a scratch and she is saying that she has to go get checked for rabies because she was attacked by a rabid hyena and I'm just like maybe Anne's right. She really is extra but she really did get attacked like an animal like the way Anne jumped up off the couch was iconic but like probably problematic at the same time. So in the next scene, Ten, so Slim and Roly Poly are by the lake and they're just having a casual conversation and then Anne comes and joins them. They are talking about how they are not really enjoying their experience but they want to, but because everybody's so filled with drama and being catty, petty, and stupid, they're not having the best of time. In confessional, Roly Poly talks about how she actually likes Anne and she thinks that Anne is cool. And so in my last video, I was <laughs> In my last video, I was saying how I can see when Anne is just being chill that I could vibe with her. Hi, baby. Hi. They're going to think that I am not taking care of you. Every time they my kids come out here, their hair is not done. I'm looking like a bag of money. My kids are looking like uh, somebody else's kids. <laughs> This is how I look when I'm not working, right, Bumps? Yep. Messy hair. So before the kids came in, I was saying I could vibe with Anne. Like, I feel like she has a cool personality when she's not trying to clout chase. Anyway, Roly Poly is saying that she really does like Anne and that she's hoping that it stays that way. So when Anne sits down, she starts telling them Krishan and 
and persuasion are about to get really messy behind the blue face situation. And so Roly in confessional is like, she does not like that she is coming and spilling her friend's tea to them because what kind of friend are you? So when she peeps this, she starts asking her, so what do you think about Jayla and Natalie? And Anne says, messy boots. She says that they're messy. One would think that that means that she does not like either of those people. So then they try to ask her about herself. They're like, well, what about you? And she says that she's good. So then they're like, so you don't have a problem with Brie or Sway? And she's like, I don't like Brie or Sway. <laughs> So they're like, so then you're not good. You have issues still. She went as far as saying that Brie has another ass whooping coming. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, she didn't really whoop Brie's ass the first time. So if they're going to rematch, they're going to rematch. But like, I don't know what this grandiose is in this house where people think that they beat up people that they didn't. <laughs> or that people snuck people when they did it. Like, I don't know what's going on in this house, but everybody is just filled with delusion. So when they're sitting talking, I'm really having my eye focused on Slim, and I have come to the conclusion that she is indeed mixed. Her white jeans are definitely showing more than her black jeans, but you can tell that she's mixed when they zoom in on her and you look at her face and her features and even the texture of her hair, when it's straightened, you could tell that she is biracial. So I think that clears it up. I hope that clears it up. Look at me assuming this lady is mixed. <laughs> <laughs> but I really do feel like she's mixed. I don't think that she's white and just out here willy-nilly saying nigga. Like, no, I really don't. So Slim starts to say to Anne that she likes Brie and she likes Anne when they're talking about the fight. And she's like, what's there to like about her? And I'm like, okay, Anne, please. So then both Roly-Poly and Slim say that Brie's really sweet, which is true. And so Anne disagrees with this. By the end of this conversation, Slim is telling Anne that the fight between her and Brie was a tie. Anne probably does not believe this but it really didn't go anywhere so we can't even call it a fight okay they was just hugging and making love on the ground so slim starts talking about the situation that happened on the bus with the whole cancer situation krishan being kind of cold towards her she was kind of saying like what she would have done in the situation and like oh yeah krishan was telling me about that so this is when started to say that persuasion is just extra. Everything about persuasion is extra. She says that persuasion's name is persuasion. So she's going to persuade you <laughs> to believe whatever story she is trying to sell. Anne definitely is probably never going to like persuasion because she feels as though persuasion is extra, but I feel like they're a lot alike. Everybody sitting in this circle is in agreement that Krishan is crazy AF. There's really no ifs, ands, buts about that. She's crazy. So, they head inside. I don't know how much time was passed. They were sitting at a table. We don't see what happened. In between the time they were on the lake and that they got in the house, we don't know what transpired between that time for things to turn up the way they did, but Roly Poly and who were just outside talking, being cool and cordial, are now inside yelling. The fight is over nonsense. It's nonsensical. It's foolishness. I don't even, like, if I tell you guys the whole entire dialogue, it would be a waste of my time, your time, everybody's time. I personally feel like Anne needs to put the bottle down. She needs to stop drinking. She needs to collect her thoughts because every time she drinks, she causes problems. She has liquid courage. And even in her confessionals, now when I'm watching her, you can see that she's clearly drunk in her confessionals. And you can see it in her eyes. She's swaying. She's slurring. She's a mess. Basically, long story short, Anne thought that Brie was going to touch and damage her stuff because the reputation of bad girls club people is that they touch each other's things when they don't like them. I don't recall Brie being like that on her season. I feel like she was one of the people that was like, don't touch my stuff. It's neither here nor there though. Anne was just being problematic to be problematic. Roly Poly had actually invited Brie up to her room to roll a blunt because she wanted to talk to her about something. She didn't say what she wanted to talk to her about. She said she doesn't even remember at this point. But because her room is adjacent as a Jack and Jill to Anne's room, Anne started yelling to get Brie out of her room or away from her room, which makes no sense because Brie was not in her room and Brie did not want to go in her room. It was just ridiculous. And so that's basically how the fight started. Anne started to pipe up because she thought that she could be top dog. I don't know. So Anne and Roly Poly are screaming at each other. They're face to face. And she's telling Anne that she does not want to do this. She's like, you don't want to do this, Anne. You really do not want to do this. And Anne is basically saying, listen, I respect you, but this is what 
my instructions are. <laughs> she's trying to say, you're not gonna little bro me, and she's like, you're not even saying anything that makes sense. Like, she was never going into your room, and Anne's stance is that she does not give a single F. The rooms are adjacent, they're close to each other, and that's all she needed to know. Nothing else mattered after that. So, Roly Poly gets to clowning Anne, as she should, because Anne is making a whole fool out of herself. And then she starts to say to Anne, like, you're acting like a little girl. So Anne is like, I am, and what? And I'm like, okay. Send somebody home. I think persuasion is right. Send Anne home. <laughs> We've had enough of her. So when she says that, she agrees that she is a little girl. Roly Poly's like, keep on, and I'm gonna treat you like one. And I said, treat me like treat me. So I guess at that point, she decided they was gonna squabble, a wobble, a squabble, wobble, wobble. So Anne, embarrassingly, instead of backing down, she decides she's not gonna back down. She's like, spank me, whoop me. And I'm looking like Roly Poly will actually whoop you. <laughs> Like sometimes you need to know just when to back off because it wasn't even that deep to begin with. Like this is stupid. So Roly Poly starts laughing to herself and she's like, and you do not want these problems. You do not want these problems and you know you don't want these problems. You can pipe up as much as you want. You and I both know that you don't want these problems. You don't have to back down. And so now I'm watching intently, okay? <laughs> I'm like, what is about to happen next? Cause they are really doing a lot of talking and not enough swinging. So Roly then tells Anne, basically that she's doing too much and why doesn't she hype up at Jayla? Do you know what this lady said? She was like, why would I hype up at Jayla? I mess with Jayla. And I'm like, 45 minutes ago, y'all was sat over there on the lake and you set out your mouth that Jayla and Natalie are messy boots. I don't know how messy boots translates to I Fs with that person, but where I'm from, it does not, okay? If somebody is messy, if you're saying somebody's messy, that generally means you do not like them. I am confusion. So Roly Poly sits back down, and at this point, she's removing her socks. So I'm watching her, and I see her moving stuff off the table. She's rearranging the furniture in the kitchen, and I'm like, yeah, she's about to fight her. She took out her socks so that she don't slip in case they get to tussle it. So Rock is in confessional, and she's like, listen, they're taking way too long. They're doing too much talking. They are pretty much in each other's faces, they could make out like they're that close. I don't know why nobody was taking the first swing, but as Anne is piping up, Roly Poly decides to grab her and start getting her licks in, girl. She started to beat her. I said, she is, she is connecting. Natalie was never connecting when she was fighting Sarah, but Roly Poly was definitely connecting Anne. I'm not, I'm not, I will not be surprised if Anne's head is lumped up, okay? When we see her in the next episode. Where it ended, they did not give us any more. They didn't give us any more. They said next time on. So this was the end of the episode. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I really like Roly Poly. And I guess next week we'll see how the fight turns out. If they're going to have more than one round. We're going to see this in a couple days because I'm uploading these videos mad late. And I'm so sorry. But now you can watch them back to back. <laughs> I love you all so much. And I'll definitely see you in the next one.